Well, let us take this day and rejoice and be glad in it. So if you're able to stand, please stand our opening on number 277. Tell me the stories of Jesus. <laughs> again everyone can have a t-shirt ordered right. for them for free the right one shirt order. right right so the collared shirts you can order in whatever size you'd like but those need to be paid for by yourself correct correct okay. or if you want extra shirts 
the, right. Yes. We'll provide one t-shirt per shirt person if you want more person. than one t-shirt yes. or a collared shirt. The cost is back on you. Yes. Do you have a cost on the collared shirt yet? Not off the top of my head, but after service, I can look it up on the email okay. um, and I can let you know on that one. Okay. All right. But thank you, Lori, for putting that in there. And then I have one other announcement that's in here, actually two. So um, for summer camp, it's time to start talking about that again. Any child interested in summer camp this year can find information available in the Sunday school room. And if you are a person that likes knitting, the Knitwits meet here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. here at the Methodist Church. So join them, bring a friend, get your knitting on. Um, that's all I have this morning. Anybody else have any announcements this morning? The birthdays and anniversaries. So we have the 30th. Lisa Winningham is celebrating a birthday. And Haley celebrated a birthday <coughs> Thursday. All right? So then we got those two. And anybody else have we forgotten? <coughs> Where's Duck Dust? All right. That's it, I guess. Come on down. All right, well. <laughs>
safe travels for his family coming back from wrestling. Oh, okay. Prayers for my dad. He goes to his surgery April 4th for stints. And his name was? Dan Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. For Rob, my husband, he had surgery Wednesday. He was doing pretty good. Yeah. For our congregation and our pastor. Linda Lavery on our prayer chain. I think we should add her in here today. Uh, also for Delilah's daughter, Brenda, who's going through some medical issues. And we have a niece, Haley, that was in a dirt bike accident this week, so prayers for Haley. Haley? Haley, yeah. I know the Gascoins are going to be on the road. Uh, in the next week for vacation. Um, some of my siblings and I and Jamie are going to be on the road. And um, my old girl's being left behind with Oliver. So <laughs> prayers for those who have to take care of those two and walk them. sanctuaries to witness the triumphal entrance of Jesus into the city and into our lives. Sometimes we get caught up in the excitements of the crowd and of the season. We anticipate victory over the forces of death that we know that is part of the Easter season of new life and new beginnings. But when the crowds have all gone home, we go back into our comfortable lives seeking to avoid the difficult journeys that we know lie ahead. We push aside the, the Monday, Thursdays, and the Good Fridays of our lives because it's uncomfortable. Facing betrayal, suffering, and death. And we confess that often we are moved easily from the exuberance of Palm Sunday to the triumph of Easter. But apart from the crowds, we are forced to come face to face with our own questions our own confusions and our own doubts, even our own fears. And so in this time together, we seek your presence in a special way. We seek to the courage to walk with Jesus all the way to the cross. We seek your guidance and strength in facing the trials of our own lives and of those we love. Even those whose energies are, are brought down by sorrow, bodies are bent with grief. Be with those who are scorned by their neighbors or who are cast aside as being inferior and of no more use. And be with those who suffer in mind and spirit and body and give them a sense of hope and purpose. For we seek to, to follow Christ and not betray him. So help us to empty ourselves of false intentions and, and to open ourselves up to the will as Christ did. Strengthen us for the betrayals and the crucifixions that we face, that our faith and love may bring us victory over all that would bring us down, and that our faith and love may bring us to, to overcome the difficulties of the darkness. And we gather our best friends around us and to share our love without restraint. Then sharing with others, we are in turn healed and we made whole. So open us to the depths of your love hidden in the mystery of this week. Let us feel your presence and forgiveness even when we betray, deny, and run away. Walk with us and lead us from denial to affirmation and from death to life. 
And we come to you with the prayers brought forward this morning for Al, <coughs> for the Hughes family, for Delilah and Darlene, safe travels for those coming back, for Dan and Rob, for the church, for Linda and Brenda, for Haley, for the Gascones and the Harpers who will be traveling. We pray for the leaders of our nations. We pray for our young men and women who serve us in our militaries. We pray for those that are unemployed or underemployed. We pray for those that are homeless and hungry. We pray for our children and their safety in, their, in the schools. We pray for all those who have not yet found you, Lord. And may they find that walk with you to become easier as the days progress. We also lift up all those that have gone unspoken. But you know what is in our heart. And we come to you now with that prayer. You taught us since we were children, but we will pray with the confidence of the children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Tooth still hurting? I can pull it up. I can. I, I am a practicing dentist. I practice on all my children, all my grandchildren. You know, as I said, practice. I didn't say I was good at it. Yes, I see you all pretty good. Hi. Now. Two separate people or You know what to do. Don't forget to smile when you go down there. change. The small things that sometimes we think insignificant but become marvelous in the works of God. So bless these gifts and bless these children I ask in Jesus name. Amen.
And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should, should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jamie, for reading in Philippians. And Paul's talking about emptying yourself as Christ emptied himself. Taking on the form of a servant to serve mankind. <clears throat> Humbled himself to the point of death. But it is true. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Lord of all. Imitate Christ, as Paul would say. Imitate me because I imitate Christ. Take on that form of a servant. Humble yourself in front of your brothers and your sisters, your mothers and your fathers, and be what God has called you to be. So may the Lord add his blessings to the readings of his words this morning. And once again, if you're able to stand, join our hymn of preparation number 280, All Glory, Law, and Honor. And stand if you are able. <laughs>
remember the triumphal entrance into the city that you made all those at least for a time see what a king was like so Lord let us see that king in a different light let us see the king of kings the way we have never seen before open our hearts and our minds to the wonders of your world in this day let the meditation of my heart and the words of my lips be acceptable in your sight my rock and my redeemer amen you may be seated the gospel lesson this morning will come from mark in the 11th chapter verses 1 through 11 and this is about Jesus' triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. Immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying this colt? And they told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those that went on ahead and those that followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered and went, went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, and it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. These are the words of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Just five days before his crucifixion is one of the stories that is reported by all of the gospel writers. Everybody remembers that day. It was a joyful and a very glorious day. A time of excitement, optimism, renewed uh, national pride for the Israelites. And what began with a handful of disciples offering praise to God turns into a citywide celebration. And if we think about it, we can, we can appreciate why. After all, the people of Jerusalem had been waiting for something like this for a very long time. 500 years earlier, Zechariah had announced that one day their king would arrive triumphant and victorious. And the prophecy had been indefinitely etched in their minds for so many years. And this glory-starved nation had in effect been waiting for the, just this special occasion for over half a millennium. They had been waiting for David's successor to come galloping into town and to take on his throne. So when Jesus decided it's time to go into the city, had the most anticipated parade. The people are more than ready to let that party begin. They lie in the streets, cheering wildly, lifting their voices and song, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. Some people in the crowd may have even compared Jesus to uh, Judas Maccabees who had driven out the Greeks in Jerusalem over a century before. And no doubt, there were those who believed that this was Jesus' intention as he's coming into town now. Their hope was that Jesus would launch a revolution against the Romans and release the holy city from the pagan occupation. Still, truth be told, all their loud hosannas couldn't hide the fact that Jesus is really not quite what they expected him to be. Judas Maccabees arrived on a white stallion. 
Jesus arrived on a little dog. On a little dog. You know, Jesus arrived almost with his feet dragging the ground and there was no conqueror's weapon attached to his saddle. In fact, he doesn't even have a saddle. He's got somebody's old overcoat thrown over this little donkey. And as we watch Jesus enter Jerusalem with his friends and followers waving palms instead of swords, we see again into the very heart of God. A significant little detail that is often overlooked in this story that Jesus sent two disciples telling him to go ahead into the village and then find a colt tied there who had never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. He rode into the city on that colt that had never been ridden before, an unbroken colt. Anyone who's ever attended any riding or roping shows have seen what usually happens to people who sit on untamed colts, especially in the midst of shouting crowds. What happens? They get thrown off. But Jesus did not need a warrior stallion. The untamed colt of a donkey makes the point just as well. The power that enters the gates of our heart does not force or even violate. It calms us. It transforms us and it guides us. He doesn't fit the, the messianic profile of the people of Jerusalem at all. And sure enough, within a week, the grand marshal of this parade will be met with the words crucifying instead of Hosanna. What are we to make of Palm Sunday? <laughs> well, we are on sure ground when we take the historical basis of the story, the interest into, uh, of Jesus into Jerusalem, as the church has taken it to be a meaningful symbol of Jesus as king. There's a wealth of evidence uh, far and wide gathered throughout history and experience as to Jesus' uh, right to kingship in the lives of individuals and even society itself. We can see the validated by the way Jesus met the, the deep needs of the human soul. He meets them in the dim borderland where we reach the exceeds of our grasp and meets our inability to find fulfillment in the material things. He meets them in our dissatisfaction with ourselves. And our unstable sense of actually missing the mark, not only of life what we were meant for, but also the possibility of forgiveness and a new life. Our experience of the strange self-defeating guidelines and selfishness fits into Jesus' call to fulfillment and service. His right to kingship is also validated by the long line of people running down through the centuries. People who have taken him as master and savior, whose lives are ministering love witnesses to the Christ power to change the human heart. Every year, New mountains of evidence pile up that Jesus was everlastingly right in his reading of life. And the most effective argument for truth of Christianity are not being spun out of the brains of theologians, but by the <coughs> events of contemporary history. We find one another overlooked in detail with the clamor of Palm Sunday in the last verse of the gospel lesson for this morning. For at the end of the incredible day, Jesus does not set up a command center in Jerusalem. He leaves and goes to Bethany. We assume to spend the night with his, with his beloved friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. At the height of his triumph, all he wants to do is rest. Have a little quiet time. Have a little loving circle of friends around him was not the kind of Messiah the people of Jerusalem had expected. And yet, they were right to greet him as king. Because even though his kingship will not be one of might, but it will be one of mercy. 
And he won't release the people from Roman occupations or take revenge upon their enemies, but he will offer them redemption. The parade. What a parade. A parade of fools. Just to put it, you know, it's kind of blunt. But what were they expecting? It was typical of the time to greet people coming into Jerusalem, especially for the Passover. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It was a greeting, welcoming them into Jerusalem to come to worship at the most holiest place that they had, to the temple. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. But then they added the Hosannas. Once you add the Hosannas to it, people start, oh, what? What's going on here? And the 12 are ones that are actually waving the palm branches and stuff. And then people have got excited and caught up in the moment. And the, and the crowd started throwing their own coats on, on the ground in front of him and throwing the palm branches down and waving and shouting. And everybody cheered. It had to have been quite a sight. The frenzy of being there. And a lot of people probably didn't even know what was going on. They just caught up in the excitement of the moment. You know? Have you ever been caught up in the excitement of a moment? How many of you remember the riots of 1967? I was there. And we were caught up in the excitement of the moment because we were going to go down there and be part of that. But we were going to be on the other side. We were caught up in that frenzy of the moment. The news had it blasted in our faces and stuff of what was going on. And we didn't make it past Mount Clemens because there was a tank in the middle of crash. And we just turned around and scooted on back home. The excitement of the moment. People are caught up and they don't even know why. There's blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hey, look at here. This guy's riding in on a, a donkey. It's a one man parade. One man parade. You guys, really, guys? It, 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 we're, we're, where's, where's the clowns? Where's the floats? You know, if you're going to have a parade, do it right. You know, it's, Coming in on a, on a little donkey. Okay. I'll wave my palm branches. Everybody else is doing it. And Jesus, one thing he wants to do is love them. Love them. He's not caught up in the moment so much as the semblance of what prophecy had said he would do. He is fulfilling that part of the prophecy. And yet he goes, hmm. yeah, I'm not going to stick around here. I think I'm going to go over to Bethany, still Lazarus for a while. You remember I raised him from the dead not too long ago. We'll go catch up on some things and we'll see how everything's going. If Martha, you cooked me a good meal. Martha was good at the kitchen, you know. Mary, I don't know what she's going to do, but, you know. They were good friends. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend an evening with my friends. And he takes only the 12 with him to go. To get some rest, get some relaxation. And yet, I think even the disciples would have found that kind of boring. We were here, we were caught up in the moment like everybody else. Nothing. Nothing. Who is this king? Who is this king of glory? What? You know? I don't get it. Nothing's going on. We had a parade. The, the, the religious leaders, they're not impressed. Rome was really not impressed. <clears throat> the 
because they're watching it ready for a riot to break out. And yet it was just a parade. Just a parade. Nothing special. What happened with the donkey? <clears throat> Imagine what that donkey was thinking. And I said in scripture it, was, it would be returned. It would be returned. Poor donkey would probably never be the same. It was probably the only one besides Jesus that figured out that they're the only two that's in the prayer. And yet, foolish, foolish people getting caught up in the excitement, not even knowing what's going on. Scripture tells us that, that they're expecting the, the, the Savior to ride in, the Messiah is going to ride in and Rome is just going to be gone. Yeah, Jesus rides in, Rome is still there. They're still there. They're not going anywhere. The parade, the waving of the palms, the silence, nothing. Jesus leaves, and the people are still there. It's like, what do we do now? What do we do now? A little bit of excitement, and then crash. And that's what Jesus wanted, just to chill. Just to chill. Because eventually, those same people that are shouting their hosannas. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. That's what the kicker was. It's the Hosanna put on the end of blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Name a new king in the parade. And nothing. And these same people eventually will shout, crucify him, crucify him. They will be caught up in another different kind of frenzy. A time when they're looking for blood. And to tell you the truth, I don't think they cared whose blood was spilled. Whether it was going to be Barabbas or Jesus, I, I, I don't think they cared. I think they just were caught up like everybody else saying, crucify him, crucify him. And yet we need the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We need to know that Jesus was very well received as a king, at least for a little while. At least for a little while. Palm Sunday is a day of celebration. It's a day to, to bring everything down, but we are fixing to move on to our Good Friday. Why do they call it Good Friday? They killed the man. They killed the man. What's so good about it? Well, Jesus laid his life down for you. Well, that's good. Good Friday. We will move into it. We will move into the Good Friday. But today is a day of celebration. We have our parades. Let us give thanks and our hosannas to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Could I have the ushers come forward?
We give thanks to you. And we give you thanks for your son, our gift that you have given us to release us from all the uncertainties of this life into a glorious new life. And we come to you with our offerings, asking your blessings upon these gifts so we in turn to be a blessing to each other, to this community, and the world in which we live. Bless these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us now by going for the hymn, number 278, Hosanna, loud, Hosanna. <laughs> God lifts his countenance up upon you. May God grant you peace. 